Right. So this is uh, welcome to Margaritas in Paradise. And uh, we're going to do a little section here called Everybody Has a Story. And I've kind of rounded up a few of my friends and I have asked them to uh, come over and help me out with an interview of basically what brought them to Pattaya, Thailand. I came up with a, a series of questions and Jim's going to give his honest opinion on these these questions. Well, my name is Jim Jim Allen. Um, as I said, I'm from uh, Cambridge in the UK. Um, I've retired. Um, I decided to retire to Pattaya as I'd been here on two or three other occasions. Um, yeah, I've got a son and a daughter and four grandchildren back in the UK. I used to uh, run a fire protection company, uh, fire safety products, etc. Wow. You know, um, I have another friend that, that's into the fire safety type stuff. You know, you know Harry, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Have you talked to him about no, that before? No. Okay. No. Yeah, he did like fire extinguishers and things like that, yeah, that in was Australia. My, that was my forte. All right. Yeah. So no, there's, no. there's a, another common connection there. Yeah. Okay. And, and you have a family. Yes. Um, uh, son, daughter, four grandchildren, two sisters. One lives in Canada, one in the UK. Yeah. What does your family think about you being in Pattaya, Thailand? Um, they're happy for me because it, it was something I wanted to do for a little time. Uh, you prepared somewhat prior to coming here. You said you had prior trips, right? Yes, yeah. I've been here uh, three other times. It was a bit of a sudden decision to move to Thailand. Right. Um, as my rental property in the UK, the landlady wanted it back. So I had to find somewhere in the UK or I then decided, no, I'll move to Thailand. So how, how did you pick uh, Pattaya? Well, I only picked Pattaya because... Um, of all the places in Thailand I've been to, this is the one I've been to most. So I knew how the system worked here, the bus routes, the, the shops, the bars. Uh, so it gave me a little bit of knowledge. I noticed you, you brought up transportation as far as the buses and that type yeah. of stuff. Do you have any recommendations? Is this? Do you think that um, if somebody was moving here to Pattaya, Thailand, that they have to consider whether they're going to, uh, drive a car. I love the BART buses. 10 BARTs, you can stay on there. And, very and cheap. A, it's very cheap, and it's a good way of orientation in, into the area. Right. Um, but I met a young lady, English young lady here, and she lives over the dark side, so it was getting over there. Bulk taxes are extremely uh, good, um, but I decided I'd buy a a car, so I bought a little second-hand car, and um, I haven't looked back since. That car has given you a sense of freedom, maybe. It's given me a sense of freedom. I can I can go shopping where I when I want. I can go out on trips when I want. So yes, it has given me a lot of freedom. Okay, and and another thing that I've mentioned before in my videos, um, the use of Bolt app. Uh, for the economic end, it's very cheap to get around. Yeah, it is. If, I mean, I've got the Bolt app. Um, if I'm going out for the night, I will use a Bolt taxi. Right. <clears throat> I find them very efficient. Excellent, excellent. How long have you lived here? Um, I worked it out last night. I've been here 17 months All in right. total. Um, so I'm still a newbie here. So, <laughs> um, you know, and I've got no regrets. Yeah, excellent. Do you miss the UK? Um, I miss family on occasions. Right. But I do miss my grandchildren. Uh, uh, use things like uh, video chat? No, I don't use video chat. I have managed to work out WhatsApp um, right, and right. messaging. So it's usually just a quick line here or there once a month. Have you uh, hit any hurdles while you were in, in Pattaya? Things that just didn't work out for you or that you needed to change or something like that? Well, to be honest, no. Um, I haven't had any uh, problems, you know, uh, police or anything like that. I'm right. Yeah. Uh, dog or cat? Um, 
either or really at the moment it's a dog my girlfriend's got a little shih tzu dog uh worships the ground i walk on which is unusual wow. um so yeah dog at the moment dog okay do you think it's necessary for somebody moving here to have a uh, car or motorbike do they need to buy one it depends on what they're here for i mean if um if you like to go out and explore the countryside and and different places yes your own transport i would say is essential um but if you're staying in patia and that's where you want to be then the public well the bart buses and bolt and a few others i mean they get you around quickly and efficiently and quite cheaply have you ever considered renting a car prior to to uh to buy your one? own car no i didn't it was uh it was on a whim really i just happened <laughs> to see the car uh, and fell in love with it um and there's no way that i would go on the back of a motorbike right right okay yeah and that, that's fair lots of people have they're thinking safety aspects about motorbikes in general because there are a lot of motorbike accidents, oh, especially are. here. Yeah. You know, but as far did you get a uh, a uh, Thai driver's license by chance? I've got a Thai driver's license, um, which wasn't hard to get hold of. And as for the driving test, well, it's farcical. Um, <laughs> a set of traffic lights, and then you've just got to pick out the color. A reaction test on a Right machine um uh, that's all i had to do and sit through an hour lecture which was extremely boring but at the end of it one license did you take care of getting your driver's license yourself or did you use an agent well my girlfriend hazel she's been here 13 years she knows everything <laughs> so she rounded me up over we went to immigration made the appointment come back two weeks later do the test have a photograph license no so, problem so it's simple. so simple that's the same for me i did it myself as well do you have any feelings about medical insurance here in thailand it's very complicated and i advise people to not take the first quote there's a lot of hidden things in these medical insurances and um, i have been here 17 months i'm still trying to find the right one do you have any insurance from from the UK that you were able to bring over with you or yeah I have I have uh, a travel insurance I really do need a Thai comprehensive type of yeah really policy. Yeah. as far as uh, medical care here in Thailand what's your opinion on that the only problem I have had unfortunately I <laughs> trod on a bit of broken glass that got embedded in my foot so I went up to the local clinic, Lama Clinic up the road. I found them very professional. Um, and within 10 minutes of being there, I was laid out on a table and the doctor was pulling the glass out of my foot. So I found it useful. I found it cheap um, and efficient. Just out of curiosity. Now, I brought up Lama Clinic uh, in another video or two. Mm -hmm before as well because i i use that clinic as well there's other clinics here do you remember any idea of how much you had to pay for that that yeah, procedure yeah the initial uh, consultation um and the removal of the glass was only about 500 bahts um <laughs> but i had to go back each day for a week to get it cleaned and dressed and that was 150 bahts a time I'm going to put this in into into u.s dollar terms okay so it, basically you're you're talking about it costs you 15 dollars for the yeah. procedure okay initially and then you had to go back for dressings and uh cleaning mm -hmm. and that every day for what four or five days four to five days yeah and that costs five dollars 150 bot mm -hmm. five dollars a day go back and take care of that procedure at that clinic <laughs> it's what a deal huh? i mean ford or toyota well i i've got a ford fiesta bright red we go fast to slight are, are you in your retirement years right now yes i've retired here yep okay so what do you do uh do you have any suggestions about transferring money to thailand yes i mean at the moment um i use my uk bank 
I do telephone banking and arrange for transfer of money when I need it. Um, however, there is something called WISE uh, that my girlfriend Hazel has been trying, trying desperately to get me onto. Because, right, the WISE app. Well, the, the actual money transfer uh, with WISE, usually about 20 seconds from start to finish. Right, right. And it's a fraction of the cost that the UK banks are charging. I'm going to touch here on on uh, your travel visa for Thailand. Right. Uh, can I ask you what type of visa you have? I've got one of these 12-month um, retirement visas. Retirement visa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, was that something, again, that you handled yourself, or did you use an agent? I used an agent the first time. Uh, the only thing I will say is shop around. And it's the company I used. Um, they were pretty good. Um, they saved me something like 15,000 bahts. You've been here 17 months. Yep. How, how have you adjusted to the climate here? Didn't find adjusting to the climate any problem whatsoever. Um, for several years, um, I was in Saudi Arabia. And if you think it's hot in Thailand, you want to spend July and August in Saudi Arabia, <laughs> where it gets to about 54 degrees. I found that the climate here suits me. It right. really suits me out. You knew of a friend or somebody that was preparing to come to Thailand to move here to do the same, follow your footsteps. Mm. Okay. Is there any recommendations that you might give them to uh, make their transition easier? Research the area that you want to go to. There's plenty of information out on the internet and things like that. How did you uh, come to... Uh, stay in this area. You 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 live right on right on the ocean. Yep. And um, I assume you have a sea view, right? A lovely sea view. Okay. Two um, lovely balconies. Right, right. So this area, it's pretty unique. It, it's not right in the middle of all the action, but it's only five minutes away five from minutes it. Five minutes away. I was going around with an agent. Originally, I wanted a two bedroom condominium. Um. We went to several, and the last thing, she said, I've got this place you might like out at Wongamat. So we went there, and I fell in love with the place. 90 square meters. It's very big. Separate bedroom, bedroom stroke lounge, straight out into a balcony with a sea view, and then we've got a kitchen dining area and a balcony looking the other way. So... I just fell in love with it. Um, do, do you mind me mentioning the name of the building? Um, no, no. It's Park Beach Condominium. I've talked about Park Beach before. It's a place that I used to live as well. Every room is a sea view. So um, I, don't, I don't think there's any rooms that are not, I don't right? think there are, no. Okay. No. Uh, but, yeah, so, so that's fantastic. I understand 100% when you walk just in the entrance, it's easy to say, with the, without even seeing the room, it's easy to say, I'm living here. This is, let's say, your girlfriend, Hazel, right? Yep. Um, and she lives on the dark side. She does. Okay. She hate you saying that. She would really hate you saying, calling it the dark okay, side. Okay. So what, what would she call it? Um, well, I don't know what she calls it. but East Patia? East Patia, probably. You know I mean? Okay. It's not dark. It's got beautiful roads, beautiful lightning, right. and, and there's a lot happening. And that, that's a fair uh, uh, acknowledgement there. I don't know how the, that side of the east side of Sukhumvit Highway got, ended up having that name, the dark side. But it's not a dark area. It's, it's a beautiful community. Uh, they have lots to do over there, lots of great restaurants. Uh, so maybe I should get out of that habit, but for right now I use it a lot. So yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> and I apologize. I think it's got its name uh, by what uh, Hazel has said. She's been here thirteen years. When she moved here, there were no street lights. It was dark. Ah. Uh, okay. So I think that's probably where it's come from. It was a neglected area, and th there just wasn't any decent roads or streetlights. Well, that makes perfect sense. That makes. Per Do you have any suggestions about, let's say, uh, budgeting or cost of living uh, while, while living in Thailand? As I said, I've retired, 
I've got a few savings. Um, one of the reasons I moved to Thailand was that the savings were going down rather quick in the UK. Well, they're not going down quick here. Um, but I do have to budget. I can live extremely comfortably um, on the pensions I've got and even save money. So um, I would say a decent standard of living here would be around about 30,000 bahts a month for a family, um, which is compared to the UK is very cheap. So, so you're saying that somebody could live here for a thousand dollars a month? Yeah, quite easily. Uh, I mean, if you don't go overboard, if you like Thai food and eat local, it's extremely cheap, okay. very cheap. If you want to eat European American food or whatever, then you pay for it. Yes, I, I definitely agree. If you're living here permanently, you can't live here like you're on a on a holiday. No, but here you live here, and you have to make the money lasts the entire month and you don't want to spend it all. You want to have some that carries over in case you have an emergency or something like that. Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, I've I kept an emergency fund in the UK. Uh, should I have a medical problem? I can get the money out. That's not a problem. Um, but I just live on my pensions and I find that they go an extremely long way. Yeah. Fantastic. Sounds like you're doing a good job. What do you think? Um, the opportunities to make friends here in Patio are. Right. Come to learn that there are a lot of organizations. I joined um, Expat Club. It does get you out and you do meet people. Sure. Um, I think there's a lot of clubs for women. I never came here with the intention of going around all the bars. Right. I found a little place in there called Leo's Bar. Right. You know, and... Um, it's the same people come in most nights during the week or whatever, but we're all on first name terms and, it, and it's extremely friendly. Hazel and I, we go out together, different bars over the, what you would call the dark side, but uh, my home bar is Leo's. All right. Yeah, that's a great point. We got an upcoming buddy video on Leo's um, bar any cooking or do you go out to eat quite a bit what's what's your um, uh, normal eating well, routine? a bit of both really um leo's does good food and i go in there monday nights and wednesday nights for food uh, my girlfriend hazel comes over friday so i cook for her friday and saturday um and we go out for Sunday lunch somewhere, different place every week. Sounds like you got a pretty good routine. Yeah, it's, it is it is a routine, yeah. What is a, your normal day like? Right, well, um, so Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, the girlfriend's over, so, you know, we're out and about, maybe Leo's on a Saturday night or whatever. Right. Um, Tuesdays, I'm over the dark side. She has a house over there, um, so I'm the number one gardener. Gardening over at, at Hazel's home, is that, a, um, is that like a hobby for you or is it yeah, something well, she, that... I mean, she's got a four-bedroom bungalow out there um, with a nice bit of land. So we spend two or three hours on a Tuesday just gardening, tidying it up and right, right. whatever. I mean, last, last week we did have an argument with a small cobra. But that's what you get, I suppose, for living in the country. Sure, sure. Yeah, so you're not a, in a regular city life. No. So do you enjoy the Thai cuisine? I do. Um, I, I love Thai cuisine. Um, I don't like it over spicy. Um, you know, I've been caught several times in restaurants where I've said, oh, okay, just as it comes, and they seem to throw a couple of dozen extra chilies in. Um, you have to be careful there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my favorite food here is Tom Yum Gum, which, uh, um, which is a, a soup. Right. But yeah, it's, it's, seafood that's soup. Quite, yeah, seafood soup. It's quite spicy, but I love it. Right. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Do you have any favorite restaurants? Um, we use a few restaurants on the dark side. There's a, a place called The Loft. Um, there's a place called The Welcome Inn. Um, Paddy's, The Outback, they're the bigger ones. Right, right. Um, but you get lovely Sunday lunches in these places. Sure, sure. All right. How about a uh, Vegemite or butter? <laughs> I've never eaten Vegemite. I love Marmite. Okay. Um, 
Veg- so Marmite's the same thing, same, right? Is it? I thought it was a slight different, but I it don't know. Probably could be. Um, yeah. But I do. I love butter. Butter. Okay. Butter. butter. butter man. Touched on gardening as a hobby. Do you right. have any other hobbies? Yes. I um, I originally ca- came to Thailand for a twelve month break uh, to pursue my hobby, which is exotic fishing. Um, yeah. The big fish right. in Thailand. Um, since I've met Hazel, things have gone a little bit astray. I've decided I'm stopping here permanently. Um, but we do do go um, fishing. Uh, I mean, the last late, late, latest place was um, Untani, Lex Fishing. Uh, absolutely stunning. The bungalow accommodation had its own like small swimming pool. You could fish from your bedroom window if you wanted. Um, um. But we caught loads of fish. I mean, Hazel had never been fishing in her life. Didn't know anything about it, but she took to it. Not actually fishing, but the photographs and, and bits and pieces. So I've fished all over Thailand for these fish. What kind of fish are you looking at here? Or, or sizes? Are you talking about like goldfish? Or- the biggest one I caught was a fraction over 200 pounds. Wow. Uh, I 200 caught pound nine in four hours. And I went to a place called Jurassic Park it's by Wahin. I fished there for three or four days. I equaled the unofficial world record for a Siamese carp of 170 pound. Wow. And that wow. took me an hour and a half to get in. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. So that's, that's another good option while you're here in Thailand. I heard about people wanting to go saltwater fishing, but... Here, you're talking about freshwater fishing. It's freshwater fishing. And for exotic fish and, and large, world record sized fish. So, yeah, that's I that's mean, a good. lot of people come from the UK just to come fishing. And, and Europeans, they come here for the exotic fishing. Well, it well. is not cheap um, to fish these places, but uh, the rewards are great. So, you say it's not cheap. It's, how, how expensive is it? I mean, well, for me to go fishing for a day at one of these places on average it's about three and a half thousand bahts but that includes the rod the tackle the baits everything it even even includes the ghillie that comes around and helps you land the fish and takes the photographs do you go out much as far as uh bars or nightlife or any like music uh yeah we um venues we like to go out um, for live music, and um, we found a place. It's a place called Bernie's. We've been to a couple of other places. Hazel knows this place like the back of her hand, and if she said we're going out for music here, we just go. So it sounds like uh, Hazel is, is a great tour guide. Living here in Patio, yeah. is there anything that you wish you could change? I think the only thing that... I would like changed is um, being a phalang and being respected as a phalang in, in Thailand. We, we respect your laws, right. um, but it's a bit more mutual respect. Right. We, I did a, another video, um, and in that I, I mentioned that you're never going to be Thai. No. Uh, it's that you're always going to be looked at as a tourist, basically, even though you live here full time. Pricing standards, yes, yeah, um, and things like that. Um, and, but we deal with it because a lot of it has to do with maybe pricing is so affordable for us that we can afford the double pricing. We can afford and, the double pricing, right? Right. So, Ed, what do you think is the hardest thing to deal with living in Thailand? I think the hardest thing is the bureaucracy. Things aren't made necessarily easy. Right. Um, you have to find your way around. Uh, it, when you get into the system, you can make it work. A perfect example of that is anything that I want done, I need a certificate of residence. That's it. That's the one. Okay. Anything that we need done is we need another copy of that certificate of residency. That's it. So, all right. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. What do you think is the best decision you've ever made in your life? I suppose the best decision I made was to sell my business. I could still 
still be working, servicing fire extinguishers. At 75, I'd had an offer to sell my business. I sold it and decided to end up here. I must say that the other best decision was bumping into Hazel. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's, even, that, that's good too. And that's a shout out to you, Hazel. Meat or tofu? Oh, definitely meat. Um, uh -huh. I dare say I've eaten tofu, but I wouldn't eat it <laughs> if I'd known it was. <laughs> All right. What other countries have you visited? Um, well, as I said before, I, I was in Saudi Arabia for several years. Um, I've been to Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, all the countries of Europe. What makes you happy? I think what makes me happy is waking up every morning, looking out my window and seeing the blue sea. Um, I get it. I get and the it. fact that I've survived another day. Right. Yeah, it's easy to do here when you, you have such a beautiful environment to, to live in. Yeah. Right. What's next in my life? That's a hard question. Um, I suppose uh, developing my relationship with... Um, hazel okay. um we do love to go away t together about every six to eight weeks we'll find somewhere else in thailand to go right so i'm slowly exploring the place um i, I would say that that's probably what's next in my life um is is to wake up and enjoy the surroundings do you have of uh, the places you've traveled in thailand mm -hmm. do you have favorites that, that you would recommend maybe going back to or, or are you just out exploring new places? Well, we go to um, several places. One place I have been to and, and we go back in, in, in three weeks is Ko Chang. I, I love Ko Chang. Right. Um, we found a little place the other side of um, Rayon called May Pim. Um, it's predominantly Thai. There's not much there, but a beautiful hotel and a lovely beach. And it's only an hour and 10 minutes away. Wow. Wow. You know, so that's that. I mean, in November, I'm going back to England in October. Um, and then in November, we're going up to Sarin to the Elephant Festival. You have anything else to add? Um, well, no, not really. I mean... If you're coming to Thailand, enjoy it. That's all I will say. Enjoy it. Pattaya is nice. It's got everything you want to do, but there's some beautiful places to visit. Um, so, as I say, enjoy your life here. Right. It, 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 it's paradise. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. Lobster or crayfish? Both. Both. I would eat either of them. Um, I can't remember the last time I had lobster. Um, but where I used to go fishing in the UK, we used to catch crayfish sure. and cook them up, and uh, they're lovely. In how big are crayfish in in uh, England? Um, uh, the the native crayfish are no more than about two inches long. Right. Um. The other crayfish, there's a Turkish crayfish and, a, and another one, they grow to about six to eight inches long. Right. Um, so they could be compared to a lobster? Yeah, a small lobster. Do your, uh, in England, do the crayfish have, have uh, claws? Yes, yeah. They've, there's an imported one that's sweeping the country called a signal crayfish, and that's got big red Pincers, right, and they flash those, but okay. they they're taking over. They're killing everything else in sight. So there's a big program in the UK to eradicate them. Ah, uh, okay. I have another subscriber that that uh, has educated me somewhat on lobsters and versus mm -hmm. crayfish, and um, so it, it's interesting to to see. We had crayfish in the US, and I think the biggest ones were probably. That category yeah. there, but they had pensions. Your family will ever come here to visit you? Daughter, and she has said that they would like to come out and visit me next year. Oh, yeah, so, fantastic. Um, we'll see. All right, I'd like to thank Jim Allen again. 
Uh, this is our first interview and, and we sure appreciate it. Thank you for coming along. See you next time.